All right, welcome back everyone. I'm Serge. And I'm Cern. And now we're going to go through each site individually. We're going to start with the sub -xiphoid. Absolutely. And what we're going to do just for the sake of making this demonstration possible, again, we usually scan our patients in the position most comfortable. Uh, Daisy here is our, is our volunteer. We're going to lay Daisy in left lateral recumbency. Uh, just to make this a little bit easier to understand. So, and we're going to start again with that sub site and go through all the questions we ask and answer there. How do we find that sub location uh, with confidence? Sorry. Well, that's actually the most important thing to do before putting the probe on the animal is finding a sub -xiphoid. Couple things you can do. You can find the 13th ribs on either side and trace them to the palpable V in the middle. And that's going to be the sub -xiphoid. Very important to do that and put the probe in there or else you risk not seeing the liver at all. Correct. And you don't want to be too far caudal because that'll put you over the stomach. Uh, so we do want to make sure that we tuck that probe uh, as far cranial at that sub as possible. That's right. We usually use just alcohol for demonstration purposes today. We will also use a little bit of gel just so that we don't soak our patient full of alcohol today. All right, so here we go. I'm in the sub and you can see that Daisy seems to be more comfortable in this position, but no problem. All right, there we go. Marker is cranial. We start seeing the liver there. I'm going to adjust my depth so that I can see the entire liver within my window. That's going to be very important as you so, want to see the entire liver. Exactly. You want to see the liver, the diaphragm, and then the region beyond the diaphragm into the thoracic cavity. All right. There and it is. So there you go. Probe is in the sub region and we can see the diaphragm and the liver there. So first question we're going to ask is? So I want to know is there free fluid at this site, yes or no? So we're longitudinal. How do we look for that free fluid and rule that in or out with confidence? We're going to fan that probe on either side of the liver until the liver disappears on both sides to be able to say with confidence that there's no free fluid. Excellent. So that's one question we've asked and answered. The next question I'll ask you, what about that gallbladder? How does that look? And in cats, we can often see a bilobed gallbladder, but how does that uh, gallbladder look? Yeah, so we saw that gallbladder earlier, and there it is right there. Nice and thin wall. That's going to be the most important thing. We don't want to see a halo sign, so gallbladder wall edema. And then the third question we're going to ask is that heart visible. Do we have pericardial effusion or not? That can sometimes be hard to identify in a cat, but we're going to see if we can find that heart beyond the uh, liver and the diaphragm in this sub location as well. Yeah, so interesting enough, in this cat, we can actually see in Daisy, we can see the heart touching the diaphragm. There it is beating over there. A little harder. I'm just going to get a little more gel on there. Um, but in a lot of cats, the heart does not touch the diaphragm. So we could see the heart coming in. Right there. Right there. So you can see the heart beating. We don't see the entire heart, but we see enough of the heart to ask the question, do we have obvious pericardial effusion, yes or no? And we actually see the cauda vena cava there too, certain. Which is another thing we want to assess. What are we looking for specifically when we see that vena cava? What are the criteria we're looking for? What are the things that help us uh, determine if that vena cava is normal or abnormal? And what's it trying to tell us when we look at that? So we want to change, if I believe I'm correcting cats, a change of at least 20% um, with respiration. So we could see the change in the cauda vena cava diameter there, which is good. That is a normal cauda vena cava. Yeah, and in this case here, we also see a really nice cardiac pulse back to the level of the vena cava here. You can see that radiation with the heartbeat. We don't always see that in our cats, but when we do see it, that is also a normal finding. That's right. What about uh, our caudal lung surface? How does that look beyond the diaphragm? Are we seeing anything there? Mirror image, beelines, yep. abnormalities? So we see a nice mirror image on the other side of that diaphragm, which tells us that we don't have any caudal lung pathology at the sub -xiphoid here. So there's no lung pathology and there's also no pleural effusion here. Exactly. That mirror image, when we see that, tells us we have air in this plane beyond the diaphragm. So that means we can rule out successfully pleural effusion at this site. That's right. And then the last thing we want to look at, we want to look at the stomach. And how do we do that in our long axis? So we can unrock the probe so we're more perpendicular. And there's the stomach right there. We can see nice big gas shadows in there. And we can watch it to see if it contracts. How many times is normal contraction in the stomach? And we have that well determined in our our dogs, we haven't actually done the research to say in our cats, but if we extrapolate from our dogs, we should probably be looking at about three to five contractions per minute. That's right. But again, that research is lacking in our feline patients. All right. So that was long axis. And then we want to actually flip into short axis and we'll repeat those same questions. So we're going to get the image in short axis. We can see it here with the liver nicely uh, visible. Any fluid, Dr. Schlu? No fluid there. I'm going to fan the probe. There we go, Excellent. so that the liver disappears. And what about the uh, caudal vena cava? You can actually see it nicely here. Yep, we can see the change in diameter, nice cardiac um, uh, pulsation there. Excellent. Gallbladder, can you show me the gallbladder in short axis? I can try to show you the gallbladder. Let me try to see if I can find it again. 
There right. it is right there. So nice and thin walled gallbladder. Excellent. And can you see the heart beyond the diaphragm in short axis? I sure can. There it is right yeah. there. And sometimes it is easier to see it short than long, so we do encourage both views. What about our pleural effusion or beelines off that diaphragm? Nope. We got a nice mirror image on the other side diaphragm, a soft tissue air interface there. Excellent. And the last thing we want to look at, because we're answering all the questions in both short and long, do we have gastric fluid distension and or motility? Again, the research is lacking on our feline patients, but we would watch to see if we have any motility and or fluid distension, which we don't have in this case. That's right. And that concludes our subzipoid site. Lots of questions here. Lots of great information. Merci right. beaucoup. Thank you.